A trick that we can use to solve collision problems is to convert to a reference frame where the problem looks simpler. So specifically, what we can do is add the same velocity to everything to simplify the problem, then solve, then subtract it, to return to the original frame. Okay, that last step is important because if you um, convert to some reference frame uh, but don't explain that in your solution, then your answer doesn't mean anything. Um, we typically want the solutions to be in the same situation as the problem was given. Um, okay, so just hold on to this idea for a moment and we'll see why this is useful. Um, so remember that we um, had a um, ideal sort of collision that we call elastic collisions. So um, for elastic collisions, um, sometimes we call those totally elastic or completely elastic. Um, what happens in those collisions is the velocities reverse in the frame where the um, total velocity equals zero. Okay, um, we call that frame the center of mass frame. The reason for that um, will make sense in a chapter or so, but for now I'm just going to mention that that's the term. All right, so let me give you just a quick example of what this looks like. Okay, so suppose that we have two carts. We have a two kilogram cart here um, that's moving one meter per second. And we have a one kilogram cart that's moving two meters per second um, to the left. Okay, well, if we calculate the total momentum here, we have um, two kilogram meters per second for the one on the left, minus two kilogram meters per second for the one on the right. So there's zero total momentum um, for this situation. So if this is a perfectly elastic collision, remember that's like an ideal bouncy collision, then what that means is that afterwards, we're going to have the um, two kilogram cart moving to the left at one meter a second, and the one kilogram cart moving to the right at two meters per second. Okay, so the two cars just bounced off each other and returned back the way they came. That can only happen in this frame where the total momentum is zero. It wouldn't work in any other frame. Um, okay, so that's fine. In this case, we happen to have the um, total momentum zero, but what if we didn't have the total momentum zero when we started? Well, what we can do is use this trick that I mentioned to make it so that the total momentum is zero, because then we know how to solve an elastic collision in that frame. So let's try that. So if we're not given the information in the center of mass frame, then what this might look like is, well, maybe we still have two carts. Um, we could have a um, two kilogram cart, and maybe this one is moving to the right at two meters per second. And maybe we'll have a one kilogram cart that is moving to the left at one meter per second. Okay, so this time um, the total momentum is definitely not zero. Um, the total initial momentum is going to be four kilogram meters per second from the left cart, uh, minus one kilogram meter per second from the right cart, minus because it's moving to the left instead of to the right. So here we have three kilogram meters per second total for the whole um, situation. Okay, well, how do we get this into the center of mass frame? Well, I know that I want to have the frame where the total momentum is zero. Okay, so in the center of mass frame, P equals zero. Okay, so um, if I have in my starting frame, three kilogram meters per second of uh, momentum, and I know that the carts have three kilograms of mass, then what I need to do is um, take velocity of that center of mass frame is the total momentum divided by the total mass. Okay, so we have three kilogram meters per second divided by three kilograms. So this is going to be just plus one meter per second. Okay, so the frame here where um, everything is um, total momentum zero is moving one meter per second to the right. Okay, so what I want to do then is subtract one meter per second from everything. Okay, so if I do that, then I'm going to have my two kilogram cart, which was moving two meters per second to the right. Now it's going to be moving one meter per second to the right. Okay, my cart that was one kilogram, well, it was moving one meter per second to the left. If I subtract another meter per second, that's going to make it two meters per second to the left. Well, now this looks just like the problem that we had before. If this is an elastic collision, we have P in the center of mass frame equals zero. It cancels out. Um, then after, still in the center of mass frame, we're going to have my two kilogram cart going like this, one meter per second. My one kilogram cart, going like this, two meters per second. Because again, for an elastic collision, we just switch the directions as they bounce apart. Okay, but then we have to convert back to the original frame.
Okay, well, I subtracted one meter per second to get to the center of mass frame, so I have to add one meter per second to get back to the normal frame. So that's going to be two kilograms. Before, it was moving one meter per second to the left. Um, when I add one meter per second to that, the velocity is just going to be zero. For my one kilogram object, it was moving two meters per second to the right in the center of mass frame. When I convert that by adding one meter per second, it's going to be moving three meters per second um, to the right in the um, original frame. Okay, so this is the solution. Um, we have the two carts that are um, hitting each other in the um, original frame. The heavier cart is moving to the right. Um, the lighter cart is moving to the left. After the collision, the heavier cart comes to a total stop and the lighter cart is moving faster than it was to begin with. Okay, so it seems like a lot of steps, but all we did was start by figuring out the momentum, then find the center of mass frame, convert everything to the center of mass frame, flip the velocities, and then convert back. Okay, so we didn't even really have to solve any equations in this. It's just figuring out why that procedure makes sense. Once you understand that, then it's pretty easy to just do it. Um, but the, the math itself is pretty straightforward for solving one of these.